So part of systems thinking, uh, part of my systems thinking framework is thinking with structure. So in the past, we've talked about uh, using lists and taxonomies, as well as using uh, exercises of cognitive control, such as thought stopping and Zen meditation, in order to help give you more clarity and insight into your own brain. Now, the next part of thinking with structure is uh, basically I'm gonna use a lesson or um, a concept from cooking, actually. It's called mise en place, which is a French term that literally just means it translates to put in place. But there's a, it's actually a philosophy, it's actually a kitchen philosophy um, that comes from you know the, the high end of French culinary world. Um, and mise en place basically means put everything in its correct place before you begin um, so that everything is nice and tidy, it's all within reach. And so if you watch Gordon Ramsay and other you know famous famous cooks and stuff, how everything is very tidy, the way that they stand, the way that everything is laid out, the way that everything is prepared, it is actually an entire philosophy. And what I realized is that uh, this has a very close uh, association with the way that the mind works. And so there's a, an old aphorism, tidy house, tidy mind. In the same way, tidy kitchen, tidy mind. So how do you take this outward behavior of being tidy and organized and very deliberate in how you set up a kitchen or a house or whatever? And how do you internalize that into systems thinking? Well, as with cooking in the kitchen, you know what you need. You need a clean workspace, you need your knives, you need your bowls, you need your pots and the burners. Everything is laid out very structurally and very intentionally so that you can optimize for the end result you're looking for, which is high-end cooking. Systems thinkers are basically high-end chefs of the mind. So how do you go about doing performing mise en place for the mind? From neuroscience, there's a couple of concepts that dovetail with this very closely. And of course, mise en place is done by the mind. So I have to assume, maybe incorrectly, but I assume that there is a very close parallel between the mental processes that result in mise en place and that you practice with mise en place and these neurocognitive concepts. And so one concept is called the task set. So the task set is all of the mental resources that get spooled up, you know, when you're doing uh, any particular task. So you might call this working memory. Uh, working memory technically is a little bit different, but on a, uh, on a colloquial level, working memory is task set. So task set is uh, like, for instance, why Pomodoro is about 45 minutes is because task switching, switching from one task to another requires uh, you to spool up a bunch of different knowledge and procedures, uh, background, that sort of thing. All the context that goes into a particular task. So one thing that systems thinkers do is we're very, very deliberate about uh, cultivating and accumulating our task set, about laying out the specific context that we need to do a, a, a given job. That might mean reading the news, reading the email, reading the user manual, reading your notes, for instance, um, but also the physical surroundings, making sure that you're in the right place to be in the right frame of mind, to have all the correct memories and context in order to achieve whatever it is that you're trying to do. There was a story of a famous writer, I can't remember who it was, some French guy, I think, who was a prodigious author. And he was asked, how does he do what he does? And one of his techniques was he had actually two separate desks facing opposite directions in the room. And each desk was covered in different items and artifacts and notes. And so he'd go to one desk to work on project A, which had all of the little cues and notes and candles and maps and whatever else relevant to project A. So he was setting up his own task set to be automatically queued up. And then on desk B, he had an entirely different set of materials and artifacts so that just looking at the desk, his mind was automatically queued in. So this is a intellectual version of mise en place.
And of course, we all have digital cork boards and virtual workspaces and all kinds of stuff to do that today. And what I'm here to tell you is that while you can use external tools, you can use cork boards um, or desk spaces or workspaces. Um, there's actually a lot of theory that goes into this, particularly in many uh, business philosophies like Agile, where you actually need physical cards to move, or uh, I guess it's a uh, like Kanban. Anyways, there's different different tools where basically you put a work item on a physical card, a sticky note, and you move it across swim lanes. Um, that tactile experience, uh, it reifies it in your mind. So that's, that's one thing. But what you can do is with practice, you don't need physical props. And I realize that this practice is actually one of the things that many of us uh, system singers do, is that we will have these mental workspaces where we can queue up the correct task set, where we can perform mise en place in our minds. Now, I'm not saying that you have to like aspire to only do it in your brain and rely on just the sheer horsepower and force of will of your neural abilities. Um, whatever works for you. But the, the key of thinking with structure is being deliberate about cultivating and creating your task set. And I guess that's about it. Um, but doing this habit and getting better at it about recognizing all of the different cues and artifacts and notes is one of the most quintessential things about uh, adding structure to your own mind. Now, I guess what I will say is that uh, you probably should practice so that you're not reliant upon the external world uh, in, order to, in order to do this. And I'm not saying you have to visualize it either. Many people are abstract thinkers um, some people have aphantasia, which means they can't even physically visualize anything in their minds. And honestly, I used to be much more of a visual thinker. But as I've gotten older and more abstract and conceptual, I think more in ideas and concepts and abstractions than I do in images now. But our brains are highly associative. And so associative memory means that you say, hey, cat, and there's a whole hierarchy of schemas cat is a mammal, it's an animal, it's a pet. You know, some of them are ginger, some of them are tabby, whatever. That sort of thing. Um, so using schemas can be a way to uh, help your brain queue up the right task set uh, and be more deliberate about constructing that task set when you get into a specific uh, groove. Now, this happens automatically. Uh, your brain has a lot of cognitive resources that do this automatically. But just because it's automatic doesn't mean you can't also practice it and get better at it. So yeah, there you have it. Task set, mise en place. Hope that helps. Do mise en place in your brain on purpose. That's how you can be uh, better system thinkers. Cheers.